speaker this evening, some of you may have heard her before, and um, I'm very anxious to hear her because when you were here, that was the night that uh, I think I was sick. I know I wasn't here. I know I was traveling here. I was sick and heard great things about you. She comes from the Children's Choice for Hearing and Talking in Sacramento. So that, in and of itself, I would want to hear about that and especially to hear about it from Leisha King. She's the developmental director and parent of two profoundly deaf twins um, who are bilaterally implanted, which I would like to hear about that. Uh, Ms. King joined CCHAT, that's the letter for the, the organization, in 2006, and she's done all kinds of things. She taught the toddler's class, she facilitated the music class, and she's worked herself right into now being a full-time employee where she said she, even when she's away from work, she's still checking her emails. Um, she dedicates her time to fundraising and raising awareness for the Seat Chat Center. So it's my honor to introduce Alicia King. So thank you so much for having me back again. I was commenting, um, it's so nice that the air conditioning is working now that the heat is rising quickly. So thank you, Anne. As she said, I am Alicia King. I am the development director for the Chat Center, Children's Choice for Hearing and Talking. And we are known as Chat Center Sacramento, but we're actually in Rancho Cordova. So we're not too far from here over um, on Coloma Road. We are serving deaf and hard of hearing children, birth through third grade, all of them use hearing aids or cochlear implants to access sound, and our mission is to teach them to listen and develop spoken language. Always with the um, emphasis on helping them get age-appropriate speech and language skills as quickly as possible so that they can make their way back into their neighborhood schools. And with our specialized services, really these children who, for many of them, were born with hearing loss, they now have access to the educational, social, and vocational choices in life. And as Ann shared with you, I know this firsthand because I have deaf twins, and I'm also um, part of that statistic where over 90% of deaf children are born to hearing parents. We have no other hearing loss in our family. Until the girls were born, this was not even on my radar. But luckily, because of newborn hearing screening, every child born in the state of California has a, a hearing screening prior to leaving the hospital. So with early detection now, they can enter an early intervention program like CHAT shortly after diagnosis and then begin that path, at least if the parents choose a listening and spoken language path, to keep those skills on track. And babies are, are being fitted with hearing aids at, at one and two months old. And as important as our program is, and the services to really focus on those listening and spoken language skills, we also have awesome parent support. And let me tell you, that is a diagnosis, truly, that comes out of left field. And you need the support to start to navigate this path that you had no idea you were going to be on. But um, my girls are 13 now. Their hearing loss is the, the least of my worst. <laughs> um, and when I thought that they may never speak, they are two chatty Cathy's and we often have to play the quiet game in the car, but you know, enough about me. Um, as I mentioned, our kids are using hearing aids or co and cochlear implants, and I have brought, um, and you're welcome to look at this as I'm talking, there are three cochlear implant manufacturers worldwide, and they're all represented at the chat center. So some of you may even benefit from hearing aid technology. In that case, hearing aids are just amplifying sound making it louder. But if you think about, and who tunes in a radio anymore, but remember when we had to tune the radio to find the station, and when you weren't quite there, it was kind of like some white noise? 
Well, if you turned up the volume in that position, it didn't make it any more intelligible. So hearing aids don't work for everyone. They did not work for my children. So they qualified for a cochlear implant. So I'm gonna send this around, you can't hurt this, it's a demo, but you can see the electrode array, there are 22 electrodes that are thread into the cochlea. You're born with an adult-sized cochlea, so you're not gonna outgrow your implant or need to have it, thank you, Shelly, need to have it replaced at any point unless there's some kind of failure. And of course, with technology, there are some failures. But that is, um, I believe it's less than 2%. So that is thread in. The external device, of course, as with all technology, has gotten smaller and better. And every five years, there's a new Go Get Em Red Rider version. So this sits on the ear. The piece that um, Shelly is passing around now has a, uh, this has a magnet and it's held on with the magnet. So there's nothing that uh, penetrates the skin. But this amazing device here is taking in sound, changing it into digital information. It's passed through the skin on an FM frequency and then it is firing the appropriate electrode according to pitch. And then that auditory nerve that it's resting against is of course sending a signal to the brain. Well, that's a fabricated impulse, if you will. So the brain doesn't really know what to do, that, do with that. That's where chat comes in. We are helping children make sense of what they're hearing. And in this position as the development director, and, and I don't have a background in development. I was a school teacher before the girls were born. But once my children started to benefit from this program, I knew as the opportunity was presented to me to become the development director, this was my opportunity to pay it forward. So I, I am proud to be in this position. I'm honored to educate you as you will all become the resources even if you're not impacted by hearing loss. Because the kids coming out of our program are, um, they are performing at levels comparable to their hearing peers. Hearing loss is not something that has to hold a child back any longer. And the kids become very savvy, as I'm sure with grandkids you've seen, very, very savvy with technology. They become advocates for themselves so that when they go back into the mainstream, and they are the, maybe the first a child of hearing loss in that teacher's classroom, they need to be able to say, oh, I need a new battery, or this doesn't sound right, or this is always a good one. Not only are our kids using hearing aids or cochlear implants, but they're also taught to use, I'm going to give you that, uh, an FM uh, Roger system. So the teacher wears a transmitter and a microphone the child wears a receiver on their hearing aid or cochlear implant. It connects the teacher's voice to the device, bypassing all background noise. Who couldn't use that in a noisy restaurant? Oh. I, I definitely do. But sometimes the teachers forget to turn it off when they go to the bathroom or talk to their friends in the teacher's room. I'm just saying it only has to happen once before the child says, oh, I heard that Mr. Schroeder is not feeling very good. And she's like, how do you know that? Well, I heard you when you weren't in the classroom. So there's a learning curve to all of this. So on June 8th, we will be finishing up our 20th year, serving a population that represents the most frequently occurring birth defect. So three out of every thousand births have hearing loss. And we started in 1996 with 12 kids. We now serve over 250 with our center-based and mainstream support programs. Because just with, because they leave chat doesn't mean that they don't need support out in the mainstream. So we continue to support them, their teachers, their families, so that they have access and can continue to make the, the growth that we all want our kids to do. And you all, as a group, should be very 
pleased, I'm pleased, since I write the grants, that you, you have supported us for a number of years now. And as this technology has, has improved and our kids uh, benefit from that, as you well know, technology's presence in education has also increased. So our, as our kids have listening and spoken language objectives, especially for our older kids in kindergarten, first, second, and third, they're also responsible for the Common Core. Who's had to deal with Common Core? Anybody in the room besides me? Okay, so the Common Core standards, they're doozies, but our kids are responsible for those as well. And kids are using technology in the classroom to access their curriculum. So for two years, grants from your club helped us purchase iPads for all of our speech therapists. We have six speech therapists on site. Our kids get daily individualized speech therapy. Those iPads are helping our speech therapists and classroom teachers better fit the needs of our kids. Get this, there are over 50,000 apps that our speech language pathologists can use to help our kids acquire speech and language. It's mind-boggling. So you've made an impact that way. And this year, you graciously gave us funds to help us purchase 12 Chromebooks. And if you don't currently have kids in education, you may not know what a Chromebook is. But I will tell you, unfortunately, kids are not putting pen to paper very often, or pencil to paper. Because most of their um, composition, if you will, is done on this Chromebook. And it is saved out in the cloud in their Google Docs. But because this is the wave, and I, it's not even the wave of the future. It is the present. The kids at the chat center need access to this type of technology because the typically developing peers have access to it every day. And our kids are gonna access state testing through the Chromebooks. They need to have that type of experience before they go back to their neighborhood schools. They need to understand that as they compose a written piece on this Chromebook, and they have it in their Google Docs, it is an opportunity for them to collaborate with someone else. And it doesn't even need to be someone in their classroom. Because with it out in the cloud, you can share it with someone else who has a Google Docs account. This is all I've learned because my kids, of course, are using Chromebooks. Those, thir yes, teaching me, you're right. Those 13-year-old deaf twins, remember, that started at the chat center? So, you are allowing us to keep up with the growth of technology. So our kids are prepared, not only with just the speech language and listening skills that they need, because you all understand the importance of speech, language, and listening. It's part of your daily experience. But you're also giving them that experience with the technology that helps them succeed educationally. And chat kids are going on to do amazing things. And you all are part of that experience. So for that, I am very, very grateful. So I know, I, I was told that I get extra points if I don't keep you here too long. So do we have any questions? Something I may not have uh, uh, touched on? What age can you do the implant? That's a great, if you didn't hear him, he said, what age can the, uh, you do the implants? So the FDA has approved implantation at 12 months of age, unless there are extenuating circumstances. If a child loses their hearing because of meningitis, ossification begins to occur in the cochlea, and that can impede full insertion of the electrode array. So in that case, they could be implanted earlier. The biggest concern for the medical community is the anesthesia. It's not the invasiveness of, of the surgery. So right now, 12 months of age. And do they need replacement? They don't because you're born with an adult-sized cochlea. As you said. No. Right. No. So unless there's some type of um, failure in the device, and it happens, and we've had that 
So there's an explant and then a reimplantation. Um, they would not need an additional uh, surgery. But I will tell you, and you know that technology continues to change and grow, become better. There will be a full, fully implantable device in my children's lifetime. And they will need to, at that point, make the decision do they want to have another surgery to take advantage of those advancements. Yeah. What does the cochlear implant cost? Ooh, that's a, oh, ah, that's a great question. Okay, the chat center provides all of our services at no cost. We are considered a non-public agency, non-public school. We are not private. We have, I'm getting to your question, it's a roundabout way. Um, we have contracts with the over 26 different school districts and counties that we serve. So over 60% of our current families are low to moderate income. It's important that they don't have to, they don't have to pay to take advantage of our services. But cochlear implants are covered by private insurance. If you don't have access, Medi-Cal covers it. So regardless of your socioeconomic standing, you have access to the technology. For me, and I will sing Kaiser's praise, we are Kaiser people, I paid my copay for four implants, so $10 a piece. At the time when my girls were getting implanted, it was about a $60,000 surgery. And they got their first one at one and their second at three and a half. But everybody has access. Yeah. Yes? How many years ago did the hospital start doing the hearing test on him? So the girls were born in 2003. And at that point, only CCS facilities, California Children's Services, were doing them routinely. If you had a child at an, another facility that was not CCS, you could request it. So about 2003. But now everybody's on board. And if the facility is too small, then they um, sub it out, if you will. And, and we all, that's another way that we found a way to fill a need in the community. We actually provide follow-up screening and diagnostic evaluations at no cost to those families who can't seem to get back in. Time is of the essence. So that very demographic that I was talking to you about, that low income group, they're waiting months to get that follow-up appointment to see if in fact their child has hearing loss and to what degree and type. Now they can come see us and get the information quicker and then choose their language option and immerse their child in language immediately. Yes? So much.